Being your best you with Dr. Keir. I'm exceptional, thank you. How are you today? I'm so good. Blocks to bold, brass to gold, better to best. We all get caught in mental mazes, believing that we have to live the way others see us or being taught to think things through. Dr. Keir is an agent of change using Geotran human programming and activations to quickly and easily release people from the automatic patterns and inner glitches that block their healthy, wealthy, happy life. Instead of going where our innate circuitry takes us, being in alignment with you is the best way to create your best life. Are you ready to be your best self? Being your best you with Dr. Keir. Welcome to the show. Hello. It's Dr. Kier again, and you are very welcome to the show. And we're just going to have a really fun time today because we're talking to someone whose work is actually, I don't know, is it unusual to be a hypnotherapist? In some ways, it's more usual than what I do. <laughs> because, but it's operating in the same theater. That is in your subconscious. Now, my experience and all studies have backed this up is that only about 10% of what we are doing or thinking or believing or feeling, and certainly the actions, our behaviors, only about 10% is in the conscious realm. Yeah? So when you know what you're doing and you're doing it deliberately. And that means that 90% of it is in the subconscious or the unconscious. Now, wouldn't it be cool if you could go in there and fix those bits? Now, I'm not saying you're broken. I, what I am saying is that we each have a divine blueprint. We each have uh, circuitry you know, that, that works best or more easily when we do certain things. Right? And that gets overlaid with toxic experiences and toxic beliefs and toxic negative thinking and what have you. I mean, all you have to do is wake up in a cheerful mood and then watch the news and watch your whole energy go... Pfft. So my experience is that, or the people I work with at least, about 80% of that actually isn't even your stuff. It comes from other people. And all of that is just being gathered up in the subconscious, in the unconscious, and then that controls or governs or motivates you to do things that really aren't you. And this is why on this program, this is why this program is called Being the Best You and why my work is focused on getting you back to being you in the now. Because yeah? in the now is really the only time that we can take action. Now, there are lots of ways of doing this. Now, I happen to focus on geotran and activations. I mean, that's my training. That's what I'm interested in, uh, especially the activations, because those were I invented myself. But there are lots of other really, really good ways of clearing the subconscious. And our guest today, Dr. Kevin Richardson, is an absolute expert. And I know that you're going to be thrilled by what is possible when you're working with somebody of this caliber. So I'm just thrilled and delighted to welcome Dr. Kevin Richardson uh, to talk about hypnotherapy and the various ways that he helps people be more their best self. Over to you, Dr. Kevin. Well, Dr. Keir, thank you so much for having me. I am just thrilled to be here and to talk about my favorite topic, hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy. Now, we've all probably are familiar with stage hypnosis. And so people ask me frequently, well, are you going to make me quack like a duck or bark like a dog? And I usually say, was well, that what you want to do? 
you know, and they go, well, no. I said, well, hypnotherapy is so much more than hypnosis. And what most folks don't know is that there's different levels of a hypnotist. You have your usual hypnotist, which usually has gone to a weekend course. And so they have very basic rudimentary skills. And then you have your master hypnotist, which has about 300 hours of training. And then you have your clinical hypnotherapist that has over 720 hours of clinical training plus residency. Mm. So in my case, I have 1103 hours of clinical training. Wow. And it takes a year plus two or three weeks in order to achieve all what you need to know. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very intensive course. And I got to put a shout out to my school, HMI, Hypnosis Motivational Institute. It, mm -hmm. has, it is the only accredited college in training hypnotherapists. Huh. And it's been in existence since for 53 years now. Yeah. So lots and of good case histories and all lots that of good case histories, lots of good research, um, well researched. So hypnotherapy has been extensively researched and has been shown to be effective in at least 147 areas. Wow. Yeah. But you specialize in? I specialize in obesity, mm -hmm. pain management, fears, phobias. I also do past life regressions, Ooh, wow. which is fascinating. Yes, it is. I had, a, I had a client who had an extreme fear of fire, just a phobia of fire, did not know where it came from, did not know how it came about had no idea, called me up and said, could you do a past life regression with me? I said, sure. It takes four sessions minimum. Mm -hmm. The first three sessions are getting down to the depth that is required in mm -hmm. order to open the veil and go into your past life. So you have to work up to it. Mm -hmm. So on the fourth session, we went, we cleared the veil. I asked him what he was seeing. He was saying, I'm in a building, I'm in London, and my building is on fire. He was describing the German Blitz during World War II on London, bombing of London. Yeah, that was very and intense for everyone. Yeah, it was intense. He was in the, his building was on fire and he expired in the fire. <sighs> So now to the current life, he has this fear of fire and he doesn't know why. Right. Now he does. I called him a little while later and I asked him, I said, how are you doing? He, his husband answered and he said, you know, we're no longer spending 30 minutes of him going around the house, around the house and around, 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 making sure there is no potential for fire in the house. Wow. And the fear and the phobia is gone. Oh, that's marvelous. Just absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Um, so yeah. there's just a lot of good that can come from hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the theory, there's the theory of the mind. When we are born, we're born with a primitive mind. Mm -hmm. And that primitive mind has all the reflexes and responses necessary for a child, a, a, an infant to survive. Mm -hmm. And as we mature and as we grow into our childhood, we are still in the primitive mind. We still don't have the capability of really analyzing uh, and using the executory functions. Mm-hmm. And at about 10 or 11 years old is when we start to develop the executory functions. Sounds about right. And at that point, 
that primitive brain becomes the subconscious and the conscious brain develops. But we have this barrier between the conscious brain and the subconscious brain. Mm -hmm. The subconscious brain is our autopilot. Yes. That's what we use to control our body. We don't tell our body that your, your heart has to beat 60 times a minute. We're not saying that, okay, heart, you know, staying alive, staying alive, staying alive. We're not doing that. We're not saying eyes, okay, blink eyelids. We don't do that. It all happens automatically. And that's the subconscious. But as we are maturing, the subconscious has the positives and the negatives. There was a very famous president, George Bush, who hated broccoli. Seriously <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> annoyed the broccoli farmers of America. <laughs> oh, and that was quite a controversy. Oh my God, that was a huge controversy. Why would he not allow broccoli in the White House? Well, he hated broccoli. <laughs> That's fair enough. I can't stand Brussels sprouts. I totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a negative for him. <laughs> That was in the subconscious. He didn't know where it came from, mm -hmm. but somewhere in his childhood, he had developed a negative towards broccoli. Right. And we all have our positives and our negatives. Absolutely. And so what hypnotherapy does is that we ask the conscious brain to go and take a coffee break. We just say, okay, we're going to take it from here. You you can just go check out for a few moments. We're going to look under the hood here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's open the hood and let's look under here. And so, what hypnotherapy does is it changes the negatives into positives. So how do we know what is a negative and what is a positive? That's what we do our initial consultation and our initial evaluation. Mm to identify the very issues that are at the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with the gentleman that had a fear of needles, fear of needles, diabetic. Oh dear. Would not monitor his blood sugars. His mm -hmm. wife had to do it uh -huh. and he hated every minute of it, uh -huh. sure. but she would just have to sit on him and strap him down to even do the poking to get yeah. the blood. Right, sure. And he hated vegetables. Hmm. So he wasn't following his diabetic diet and he wasn't monitoring his blood sugars. And his doctor was screaming at him that you're out of, you, you are just so out of control with your diabetes, you're gonna die young. You're, you could go blind, you could lose a leg, you are really in trouble. Right. And so his doctor said, uh, go see a hypnotist. How very intelligent of his doctor. I thought that was absolutely incredible because most doctors, they just laugh at it. Yeah. And so his That's doctor funny. said, go and talk to a hypnotherapist. I saw him for eight sessions. Eight sessions. Okay. We cleared him of his fear of needles. He was monitoring his own blood sugars, doing it three times a week. His wife didn't have to do it anymore. Number two, he was going to the grocery store and buying vegetables for the Voluntarily. Meat. Voluntarily. <laughs> and then he was looking in his wife's recipe books and buying recipe books on how to prepare vegetables so that he adhered to his diabetic diet and he went and saw the doctor and the doctor said i don't know what you're doing but keep it up because your your diabetes is back under control and it's so well under control we're dropping your insulin we're going to lower oh, the dosage fabulous so and then his last session with me, I should back up a little bit. His son was also developing this fear of vegetables. 
and hated vegetables. Right. But, but he was basing it on what his father was doing. Of course. Perfectly understood. So when, his, when he saw his father cooking the vegetables, preparing different dishes for the vegetables, he now started liking vegetables and eating vegetables. It was no longer a fight at dinner time. So it was a ripple effect too. The ripple effect as well. So my very last session with him, I was getting ready to sign off with him. And I, you know, I was saying, well, I'm always here if you need more boosting. If you, if you need a little extra help, I'm here. And his wife said, are you wrapping up? And I said, yes. She says, thank you for giving me a new husband. Oh. Thank you. I don't know what you did. I don't know how you did it. But he's now managing his own diabetes and he's eating vegetables and he's cooking them and they're really good oh do you see this question here Can i do you and you have sugar yes. Yes. Oh, yes 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 <laughs> <You say yes. laughs> speak to us there's more than one person watching here that wants oh to know my this. god <laughs> I can I can attest to that. And I have a horrible sweet tooth. Hence being overweight. Been there, done that. Yo-yo dieting the whole bit. But mm -hmm. I get caught in the sugar cravings. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. I mean, they're bad. They're really yeah. bad. Like those receptors, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the sugar cravings in my study of obesity and getting into obesity because I was losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, gaining, 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 and not losing. Mm. Well, in the study of obesity, there are nine hormones mm. and the biomes in our gut. Yeah. The microbiomes is where the sugar cravings come from. So when you are eating sugar, the microbiomes that feed on the sugar thrive and they become abundant. And they create gas. Yeah. That's, that's why people like me who I actually make chocolate truffles. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> that that's how I know I've had too many is. Uh, yeah. You know, I get this gas well, because the little know. critters are, are excreting gas from right. eating the sugar. Yeah, they're fermenting. They're fermenting. Yes, yes they're fermenting. I knew there was a word. <laughs> so, You're getting well, tipsy down there. <laughs> yeah, they're having way too much fun. Um, so what research has shown is that the microbiomes that thrive on the sugar, they grow and multiply. And they have now found the connection between the gut and the brain. Oh, yes, yes. I was reading about that just the other day. Most yeah. interesting. And it's very fascinating. And they're still doing more research to fully understand that communication connection. But the microbiomes, they send a signal up the vagal nerve, which goes directly into the brain and into the pleasure centers. So the microbiomes send the signal saying, sugar, please. And it goes right to the pleasure center, which then becomes a strong craving. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hypnotherapy can help with that, but also to help really get rid of the, the sugar cravings is that you need to do some research into probiotics. Oh, definitely. Definitely very helpful because then you're pushing it instead of trying to eliminate the bad, my uh microbiota more right. microflora you you're doing what we do with habits in my world which is we create a good habit to push uh -huh. out the bad habit so you want Correct. to have the probiotics to move the less helpful biota out well the uh, yeah get rid of to get rid of it and it real and then pairing that with hypnotherapy this is so we can then clear it and so you can get rid of it. So when I started taking probiotics and doing self-hypnosis, 
It was gone. Love it, love it, love it. It was gone. Um, just last week, I made you inspired me into chocolate, Doctor Kier. Um, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for all people who are interested, if you go to my first website, drkeer.com, there's a whole section on chocolate truffles with a basic recipe. So, right. have at it. Sorry, thank you. you. <laughs> so, they at the grocery store they make this uh, brownie cookie. It's a okay. brownie with a cookie on top. Interesting. And it's chocolate chip. Of course. I mean, and it's so good so my husband likes likes them so i usually buy them but unfortunately i eat them first so i made a whole big bowl of them a whole dish of them and instead of sitting there eating them i cut them up and i said here take them to work and enjoy i'm impressed and no longer buying ice cream no longer buying cookies no longer buying cakes I, and pies, no longer doing that. The craving is under control. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And and yeah. as a backup to that, I, maybe we can get together after this interview, yeah. uh, but as, for our listeners, as a backup to that, one of the things that I've noticed, it's not that I'm overweight, but I've got 10 pounds I'd like to get rid of, you know, and I've, been doing intermittent fasting and cutting down on the carbs and all that good stuff. But what I found most helpful, if I can just keep to it, is that if I have no sweets for three weeks, mm -hmm. it's gone. The problem is, <laughs> I make chocolate truffles. <laughs> I'm not much past the three weeks. <laughs> and the sugar aroma wafts in the kitchen. <laughs> I mean, it's maybe five percent chocolate, but even so, you know, I need to have more local friends to have pass these chocolate truffles to. Clearly, yeah. Yeah. anyway. So I digress. So, no, it's absolutely fascinating what you're what you're saying. I'm very very interested. It, it really in is so interesting because one of the areas that I really am because I too am obese I'm just over the BMI <laughs> and the obesity and it's like darn you gotta move um, that needle <laughs> you know I've lost 80 pounds I've gained 85 I've lost 85 I've gained 85 again it's yeah. up and down but you have three main hormones in your body that control this. You notice I'm taking notes here. Please carry on. Okay. You have two hormones that control appetite and hunger. Leptin, L-E-P-T-I-N, says to your body, you're full. You don't need anything else. And that lives in your fat cells. So the more fat cells you have, the more leptin you have. Hmm. Grendelin, on the other hand, is what tells your body, you're hungry and you need something to eat. Grendelin lives in the stomach. Could you spell that one for me? Because I heard you say gremlin as a little... Grendelin. G-H-R-E-L-I-N. Thank you. Unfortunately, I'm not, being fit, I'm not being fitted for my dentures until next Monday. <laughs> so I have a lisp. <laughs> you mean you're speaking at an angle? Yeah. You have a list. <laughs> yeah. I'm listing with my lisp. <laughs> well, thank you for spelling it. G-H-R-E-L-I-N, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, and, and that, that's, controls, that tells you you're hungry. That, that, that's the, that tells you you're hungry. That lives in the stomach. Yeah, yeah. So your stomach's growling, basically. Okay, so here comes the problem. When you're losing weight, you're losing leptin. And leptin is the one that says, okay, you're full, we've got enough. Don't, that's it's done. It's the one that's telling you you're full. But the cruel joke is that gremlin is increasing as you lose weight so you're hungry remember as what's his name said 
inside every fat man there is a thin man screaming for food food yes <laughs> yes basically so it's the balance and it's finding the balance and so when people go on diets diets are only meant for limited time right you can't sustain it mhm mm and if you're on diet you're you're controlling your portions and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller well we can't live on just air alone not most of us anyway we have to live on food mm -hmm. we require food and water so what's the what is the answer to this the answer is a a combination of supplements yeah probiotics uh-huh and a nutritional program mm -hmm. not yeah. a diet a nutritional program and in my in my 8 week program that i offer i teach people the the nutritional aspect of it mm -hmm. because we can do hypnosis and hypnotherapy works very well with it with weight loss because mm -hmm. it, it partners with your losing weight Mm -hmm. The other issue and it's a huge issue and it's between the conscious brain and the subconscious. Yeah, I'm That's very true. familiar with that boundary. Mhm. Mm <laughs> it's called self image. The body has an image of where it wants to be. So when you look in the mirror and you're overweight and you look in the mirror, you're going, "Ah, I look fine. What's the big deal?" But then someone takes a photograph of you and you're going, "Oh my god, when did Shamu come into the room?" And you're going, "I'm huge. I am so fat." When you look in the mirror, you're looking with your subconscious mind. I never thought of that. That's very interesting. And when you're looking at a photograph, you're looking at it with your conscious brain. Conscious, conscious mind. mind. Yeah. Okay. Those two images. Um, I see we have got a question here, and we'll get to that in just a second. But those two images don't match. Right. That is the reason for the failure of diets. Yes, I understand. I absolutely get what you're saying. Yeah, because so, built-in stress because of the incongruity. Yeah, there's it's incongruent. So what hypnotherapy does is that it makes the images congruent. It brings them together. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, can question. someone with imposter syndrome or improving self-image? Yeah, deal with imposter syndrome and or improving self-image. I know yeah. I can improve self-image like that. Right. And, and I, I bet you can too. I can too. And yeah. using hypnotherapy, we can do self-image. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's part of what I do when I'm working with people that are overweight, but also people that have a poor self-confidence or a, a low self-esteem of themselves, they have a poor self-image of themselves. Exactly. So, using hypnotherapy, yes, we can improve that. And imposter syndrome also is 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 in that border country between the conscious yeah. and the, and the the subconscious. So right. th it's really the same issue. Um, it is in terms of of what you offer. Mm -hmm. It is. We we work with it in the same way. Yeah, as exactly. working with the self image. So, mm -hmm. that's um, cool. and that's why I love working with obesity so much is because it is a complex topic nice challenge it is yeah and most people don't realize the components that go into obesity and the components that cause us to fail our yeah. body causes us to fail when we lose weight yeah and, and for, in the, in the analogies that i use for my work it's like mm -hmm. there's something going on in your computers you you picked up basically a computer virus and the computer right. itself is not able to detect that or to fix it. Right. But you as the 
computer programmer in this case, or computer technician, you've got some tools to go in there and say, oh, no, wait a minute. No, no, no. We need to reintegrate mm -hmm. these two hard drives, if you like. Yeah. yeah? Bring them together. So yeah. that they're, they're speaking to each other. So they're in accord mm -hmm. with the actual, with the actual intention. Right. Of the, of the, uh, of the person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I move people away from thinking part of obesity is we think we're fat. We tell ourselves we're fat. Yes. And we unfortunately, all your obese. cells listen. Your cells listen to what you're saying all the time. All without the time. a filter about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. They're so just the, the other thing that we do in hypnotherapy is we change our self-speak. Yes. What do I mean by that? I think you know where I'm going. I, I do, but we, please <laughs> go there. Help people to think that they're thin. Mm -hmm. We identify what their ideal weight they want to be at. Mm -hmm. And then through hypnotherapy, we reprogram their self-speak. You know, this reminds me so much of um, my last master class that you attended. Thank you very much. Yeah. Where you and some of the other people were ever so surprised when I said, you know, that your system governs how much money you can make in a given month, how much money you can receive in yeah. a given month. And you said, oh, my gosh, if we can do that. And I'm sitting here saying, and we can change that. That's exactly the same thing you're saying. You're using different tools, but you're working in exactly the same area. Mm -hmm. You're saying, if we can, if we can identify and, and I was going to say isolate the issue. The isolate's no, maybe not exactly the right word. Acknowledge right. the issue in a quantifiable way as well as a quality-based way. Right. Then we can change right. it. We can change that set point. We can. Yeah. We can. Fantastic. It is. It is just incredible. Um, another area that I work on is pain management. Mm. And mm -hmm. two years ago, um, I'm retired occupational therapist. I ah. retired last July after 44 years. You know, enough is enough. <laughs> you started at the age of 12, right? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, my God. It was wonderful to go through puberty and helping other people. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just love it. Really. Oh, it's just wonderful. But this lady had fibromyalgia. Uh -huh. Severe case of it. Uh -huh severe case of it so as an occupational therapist i was called upon to teach her how to take care of herself again using different techniques there was nothing i could do there was nothing mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. she was she was curled up in a ball in the fetal position in bed crying 24 days her husband had to take her to the bathroom. Her husband had to shower her. Her husband had to dress her. He was doing all the cooking, all the shopping. She could not get out of her bed. Wow. But I'm thinking, okay, let's take off the occupational therapy hat. Let's put on the hypnotherapy hat. Yeah. There I can help. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love your hat. I'm going to have to get one of those. Oh, um, well, let me get you one next time I'm in France. Yeah. Okay. Tell me what color you want. But anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and so after eight sessions, I taught her how to rethink her, her pain. Wow. We eliminated from her vocabulary the word pain and referred and replaced it with discomfort yeah i can see how that would help right there uh -huh. okay and then i taught her how to do self relaxation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how to relax because when you relax the muscles relax the pain mm -hmm. is reduced mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. so then we did hypnotherapy on her managing her own discomfort 
Ah, taking a step back. I love it. Taking a step back and disassociating from it. Right. Realizing that it's something over here, but not in here. So that detachment and mastery is all about detachment. It's detachment. Yeah. yeah. So on the eighth session, that was our final session. Her whole goal was to be able to cook the entire buffet for her grandson who was graduating from law school. Wow. Plus get in the car and drive the four hours to where he lived. She hadn't been in a car in months. Heavens. She couldn't get in the car. She was in so much pain. Yeah. And she wanted to start cooking. She was tired of her husband's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> she always say, I'm a much better cook. <laughs> okay. you got, I, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. <laughs> so on the eighth session, I get to the house. She's in the kitchen packing up the buffet. She had done the laundry. She had folded the laundry and had put it away. She had vacuumed the house. Her husband was getting the car ready and was loading the car. Yeah. And then she said, I didn't tell you, did I? Tell me what? He goes, two weeks ago, I drove to the grocery store for the first time in two years. And I did the grocery shopping. Wow. She said, I have never been able to stand or walk that far before. That's remarkable. So by the eighth session, she was functional. She was taking her own showers. She was going to the bathroom herself. She was dressing herself. And she was cooking and cleaning. And she was driving the car again. That's how powerful hypnotherapy can be in someone's life. That is really remarkable. Good job. So it very rewarding. You know, you're in the you're in the in the healing arts also. And it's so rewarding yes. to watch our folks improve and go to the next level. Absolutely. Whatever it is, whatever it is. So I absolutely love what I do. Mm. I never tire of it. What what actually oh well, let's take this question first, then I'll ask my question. So, do you teach people to hypnotize others? I do not. Right. I it, do not. It's not everybody's metier. It's not everybody's thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you're truly interested in becoming a hypnotherapist, you can contact HMI at their website, www.hmi.com. They're located in Tarzana, California, and they do all online training. It's all online. Oh, they do it online. Oh, that's fantastic. It's I did my online. doctor online too. Oh, it just makes it so much easier. Oh, I mean, plus the broken leg at the time, which didn't. Yeah, I mean, it's like I don't have time because I live in Palm Springs and it's yeah. in Tarzana. It's a four hour drive. Ooh. Then if you hit traffic, <laughs> OMG, you know, Los Angeles is famous for their yeah. traffic jams that just extend for miles and miles and hours and hours. Yeah, so, but if, yeah, but if you can do it online and then great, that's good. And the, te so, the teachers are all live, so oh, that's there. You go. That's a great answer to that question. Yeah. So my question was going to be: so, what got you into this? I mean, I actually started out as an architect. You know, so it's yeah. I have to keep explaining how I ended <laughs> up being, being a spiritual <laughs> engineer. <laughs> But you, well, it sounds like that's a big a jump. <laughs> that's a jump to go from an architect to a healer. <laughs> it's all about structure, you know. <laughs> it is. It's about structure. It's about systems. Just yeah. different systems and different structure. Right. Well, I had been in healthcare as an occupational therapist for years, for uh -huh. forty-four years, and I was working with clients that I couldn't help. Especially pain management clients. Uh, right. There was nothing I could do. Mm -hmm. And if they hated the managing their diabetes, they refused. There's nothing I could do. Right. I had no tools in my tool bag 
to help the, that lady that was in severe pain. Right. Mm -hmm. I had no way of helping her. So that got me. I originally worked in a job. Um, I was mid-management for 22 years where I was mm -hmm. like an area manager and I flew all over the United States Ooh. and going to different clinics and making mm -hmm. sure they were compliant. Mm -hmm. And I was working with a colleague who kept interrupting me every moment, every word I'd say. Well, let me add this. Let me add this. Let me add this. Well, I developed a stutter. And I really, I really developed a hate with working with her. <laughs> I mean, it was like, <laughs> I just want to wring your neck. Um, so I went to a hypnotherapist. Cured me within four sessions. Ooh, nice. But I haven't stopped talking since. <laughs> And we are duly thankful. Actually, yeah. so like ages ago, you know, like 20 odd years ago. Yeah. It's something like, um, you know, if you had, if you were really living your ideal life, how would you make money? And I said, through conversation. And they gave me this look that said, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> I talk to people. I talk to people until the answer falls out of the sky. And then I sort of, you know. Do the Geotran or whatever it is I'm doing with them. <laughs> and I cross the door. I totally get it. <laughs> well, uh, then I put on so much weight and I kept losing on, I kept the dieting kept falling, failing. So I started doing some research into it because I was working on my PhD and PhD was part of obesity. Uh -huh. So then part of what I ran across was several research articles. Uh -huh. on hypnotherapy and weight loss. Uh -huh. So I went to a hypnotist. We did six sessions. I lost 26 pounds. I kept it off for two years. Ooh, good job. Then we ran into some health issues and all of a sudden it blossomed back. Hey. It ballooned back up. So um, we're getting it under control, but what we realized is that you can't sustain a diet. No, you can't sustain it. You have to transition onto a nutritional. So I became a certified uh, vegan coach. Ah, mm -hmm. And so I learned about different diets and the vegan. And we mm -hmm. thought, eh, we're not, we're, we're just not up to the vegan, but we can do half vegan. Yeah, that's, that's fair. So then I went in. Edge person. Yeah. So then I became certified <laughs> trying to figure out which diet is best for people. Yeah. And well, for us, worry as well. Yeah. We're transitioning on to the Mediterranean diet. Yeah, I like that one. Mm -hmm. And so you're eating more, but you're actually eating less because most of it is bulk and fiber. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're using the vinegar and olives to help curb the appetite. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be a long road. The safe way to lose weight is like one to two pounds a month. Hmm. This is the other area. Thank you for reminding me of this. The other area of hypnotherapy is to keep the stamina because it takes so long to lose the weight mm -hmm. safely. People give up. You know, another aspect, I would think, just from what I know, I mean, obviously you're much more knowledgeable in this area than I am, um, but I have always been also been told that stress is a big factor. And I'm, I'm a kind of adrenalinized person, so uh -huh. that really made a lot of sense to me and how that fits together with the, you know, the cortisol and the fat and the that they have an interesting kind of they process. Do, they do, and um, when we become stressed we produce hormones mm. and some people some people respond by not eating they're mm. too upset to eat and then there's people that respond by eating by eating and then overeating yeah and not realizing how much they've eaten mm. so um so yes yeah, stress does play a major factor emotional eating is huge and then obviously that's something you can work also work with with the hypnotherapy yeah. i'm sure Oh, another, oh, awesome. 
question. Isn't that good? Oh, my God, this is a fabulous question. I just did a class in how to end procrastination using hypnotherapy. Yes, it is someone uh, I can help. Procrastination is really uh, self-confidence, uh, lack of self-esteem, and motivation, and also not feeling worthy enough. We just yes, yes. So, uh, so yes, procrastination is a huge area that we can work with. Is that the uh, master class that you did a week ago? Yes. Before? So is that available on your Facebook page? Yes, it is. I just okay. put it up. Hey, everybody, what is your Facebook? What's the name of your Facebook group? So people can go and find it. Um, Kevin Richardson. Let me see. Um, yeah. How do I get Guys, to people listening, you do you see that this is Dr. Kevin Richardson. Look up Dr. Kevin Richardson on Facebook. Or and even I, look up Kevin Richardson. Yeah. So and, and you now see what he Facebook. looks like. So you know that you've got to the right the <laughs> right <laughs> Kevin Richardson. <laughs> I have an updated is. photo there. I have an updated photo. So wrinkles and all. So um, but it you can reach me by my website. That's www.kevinrichardsontherapy, all one word, dot com. Or you can reach me through email, and that is kevinrichardsontherapy at gmail.com. There you go. So, so there's three ways that you can reach him. And Facebook, and I am on Facebook. Yeah. And I just did a master class on how to use hypnotherapy to end procrastination. Right. Which and, I have to admit, I had did not attend because I had a client that minute and right. I did not loop back around to it. So thank you for reminding me. And I promise you, I will go and watch that. Because it, it is on my web page it, or is on, it's on my uh, Facebook page. So mm -hmm. um, we just put it up there last night i just got it and right. uh, just put it out excellent so, yeah so okay people you have no excuses do not put this off till next week <laughs> no <bother. laughs> no procrastination allowed procrastination. <laughs> sandra boynton's got this great cartoon which has got like you know, one of those varsity shirts that says yeah. varsity procrastination squad <laughs> <laughs> We're having tryouts maybe next month, you know. <laughs> oh. No, that's a that's a really great application, that one, because yeah. a lot of people struggle with it. And it, it is all about I, I believe also that it's all about self-esteem and self-worth because on some level your subconscious is saying you don't deserve whatever good thing you would be achieving right. or accomplishing or receiving if you were not putting it off right yeah. and also you're not worthy of it exactly exactly yeah i think it's the same thing we're saying the same thing we are saying the same thing yeah, yeah. but you know we're saying it in stereo so that's good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do the same thing but we just use different exactly which yeah. is which is actually really fun when when we work together because uh -huh. it's like oh wait a minute, oh well, I see I can do that with that's over here right okay well look you could also do it this way and then yeah. that adds to you know the people that we're working with we right. can we can bring a bigger toolkit yeah we can. Um, to to whomever and 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 different things work more effectively on on different people just depending on what's going on in there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we just don't know till we open up the bonnet, as we say in Britain. <laughs> we'll have a little look, you know. Oh, Once you get a look that. under the hood, then you can make the, the changes necessary. Yeah. I remember Garrison Keillor saying once that, that really, as a guy, I mean, I wouldn't know this, but as a guy, you only have to be able to recognize one piece of a car engine. So that when six of you are gathered around looking under somebody's bonnet, <laughs> All you have to be able to do is say, well, that's the starter motor, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Nobody else will deal with the rest of it. It's fine. 
<laughs> I know there's a spark plug in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should drive somewhere and can't remember how you got there. Is that hypnosis? I... Yes, it is. Yeah. Huh, that, it's never occurred it's, to it's me. A really, that's a really good question because everyone, and I get questions a lot. I can't be hypnotized. There's no way you can hypnotize me. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? We go in and out of hypnosis several times a day. Oh, yeah. This is a prime example. If you drive somewhere and you can't remember how you got there, that's hypnosis. Mm -hmm. When you're going in and when you're going into sleep, you go through hypnosis. Hmm. If you just ate something, an emotional eater, this is really interesting. They will go into hypnosis and not remember that they yeah. ate how much they ate. Yep. Or they'll go into the refrigerator in the middle of the night and the next morning they're wondering, what's this spoon here for? That's hypnosis. Yep. Hypnosis. Or when Michael and I go shopping and even though we have said several times, now you're going to drop me off at my house and we're going to divvy up the groceries and then drive home. His car will shoot straight past my driveway <laughs> and end up at his house if he's not really paying attention. Yeah, that's, that's, a hypnosis. that's hypnosis. That's hypnosis. Yeah. So, or if you are... Um, you feel like you were in class somewhere and you don't remember mm -hmm. that could be boredom but that's also hypnosis okay so look at this uh, question does that mean i'm hypn i hypnotize myself while driving or does the traffic hypnotize me it's the motion of the car and yes, that's focused, the subconscious. It's, it's the repetitive motion of the car but you also are focusing your attention on the road ahead and so the more you focus on the road ahead, your peripheral vision comes in and then you become focused. All hypnosis is, is a focused uh, attention. It's a laser focused mm -hmm. attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. these are great questions. Wow. Hey, I just said, just a shout out to our wonderful producer, Angie V, who is the one who presumably invites these people to <laughs> To watch in the background and give us these terrific <laughs> questions. So good job. <laughs> yes. Yes. <sighs> Producer B is wonderful. Yeah. It's it's, it's 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 such a fascinating area, this conscious, subconscious, unconscious. It is. Uh, the, it's very fruitful, you know? You know, the mind-body connection is very powerful. And Yes. Using hypnosis, we can use the mind-body connection and make changes. Using hypnosis, we can change the levels of leptin and ghrelin. Well, that's what I was thinking as soon as you mentioned them. I, I went to you know my toolkit. And right. Thought, huh, I wonder, firstly, I'm going to check whether I am allergic, that is, whether I'm reactive yeah. to leptin and ghrelin just in my own system and then right. i thought gee i wonder whether i could move the needle in the subconscious right and then i thought and that's when i said to you hmm kevin kev could we maybe talk after this <laughs> after this <typing?"> <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, yeah. just, I'm really curious about you how can change how it research has shown that you can manipulate the levels yeah. Using the mind body connection and hypnosis. And you know, you know, I primarily work with women. And um, it's almost all women in my group, with the exception of, say, you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, I've got a, I have got a couple of clients who I'm letting into my women only group because yeah. they obviously res I resonate with them, they resonate with me. Yeah. Um, and and I specifically work with women who are normally between 40 and 60 and are mm -hmm. going through one of those midlife pivots. That's why my little title here is the midlife magician. I'm just trying it out anyway. Yeah. The point is that these are exactly 
the people who would love to know that they can regulate their hormone levels with a bit more conscious deliberation. Yeah. Yes? Because we're all perimenopausal or menopausal, or in some cases there have been <laughs> medical problems, which meant that, that they had to have a hysterectomy or whatever, that, that's right. still messing with their hormone balance. Yeah. Yeah. So just the connection between putting on that middle-aged spread sometimes yeah, and what's happening hormonally for, for the women that I know, it's like this opens up this whole area of, oh, my God, we can fix this. We can, we can change We can that. work with it. We can work we, with it. It's, maybe working with it is a better way of expressing yeah, that. I can't cure anything, but I can help people achieve what they want to. Well, that, so. yeah which amounts to the same thing in real yeah. life is like, okay, I'm not trying to say that people are broken because they're going through menopause. That right. has sort of been the attitude of the mainstream medical establishment for a long time. And obviously that's not true. I mean, people are, are women are going through normal hormonal normal shifts, condition. but yeah. it would be really nice if we could ameliorate them, if we could soften them, if we could readjust some of that internal chemistry that would that would be such a relief to so many people including the husbands and partners of these menopausal women yeah yeah <laughs> i think like i saw a great i saw a great t-shirt one time that said something to the effect of like um yes i have a gun and yes i'm going through menopause <laughs> watch it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't mess with these people. <laughs> Don't mess with them. Yeah. So, and men so, go through andreopause. So men go through their hormonal changes. All yeah, time. that's not something I know as much about. Just, yeah, hey, I'm not a guy. But I I'm, I can well imagine that it is the case. And I'm sure that that's something that you can also work with. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I can. We can work with it, but we can't reverse it. Can't change it. We can... Right. We can kind of help to alleviate some of the the emotional components to it mm -hmm. uh, because women because men go through the erectile dysfunction mm -hmm. they go through the loss mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. their their sexual appetite so yeah th and and men and women go through that as well yeah so and some of the the functional components of it uh, hypnosis does work with erectile dysfunction. Good to know. I mean, not for me personally, but you know, others. <laughs> and speaking of which, alas, we have come to the end of our time together for today. But oh, oh, I just darn. want to thank you so much, Dr. Kevin, for, for coming and talking to us. I, I oh. know that people will get real inspiration from the possibilities here, from the, from the potential uh, of working with a hypnotherapist such as yourself to to really soften and ease mm -hmm. some of these issues that they probably at least going by my clients you know they've tried everything yeah, yeah. and and maybe it's just the clients i attract but also there are mystery ailments out there yeah and sometimes we just need to as i say look under the hood <sighs> so Oh, nice comment. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, that's just wonderful. Thank we will you. definitely have you back on again, Dr. Kevin. And maybe oh, I'd you love it. I do a session, little mini session with us just yeah. so that people can really experience the power. I, I just loved it, Dr. Keir. Thank you so much for having me. It's just been a, an honor to, to be on your show. So thank you so much. Our pleasure entirely. Thank you all for watching. See you next week with who knows who I've got lined up next. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. And I think we'll go off to the cache. What do you think? I think we should. I think we should. Bye for now. Bye.